to me, there has never really been a grain-fed versus grass-fed debate because when I look at that ribeye steak with that huge kernel of fat and that intramuscular marbling and look, then look at the lean grass-fed steak, I think of the same thing as looking at a huge red apple in the supermarket and then that brown bruised crab apple on the tree. It's a product of modern agriculture and it would not be possible without antibiotics, growth hormones, selective breeding, and the crude corn and soy feedlot animals. It would not be possible. So there's two focuses to this video mainly. The poor quality and sickness of these animals and the second thing will be the focusing on the marbling in these steaks that is created by selectively breeding these animals. So I'm not going to name anyone, but the reason I'm making this video is because I saw someone on, a social, on social media say that, oh, these cattle ranchers truly care about their cattle. And this particular person bought steaks at Costco. And I'm like, you know, man, that's, it's one thing to, to buy these steaks and say they're grain fed and say you feel good on them. But it's another thing to try to justify consuming them and say these animals were happy and healthy and that this meat is good for you. That is, that, that irritates me a bit. And I think that's pushing the boundaries of what's truthful. So the reason you give an animal antibiotics is because what you're feeding it makes it sick and it cannot gain weight, it will get sick, it will die otherwise. So the, the feedlot scenario is you, an, an animal gives birth, you take that cattle off the mother, you give it a, a crude soy formula, then you put it on grass, and then you finish it on a crude corn and soy fattening mix. That's what most beef these people are buying are, and those animals live very unhealthy, unhappy, uncomfortable lives because of the uh, the antibiotics make ruining their organ function, they're getting ruminitis, lesions on their liver. Um, the growth hormone in meat production is vastly different from dairy production, so I don't really want to touch on that. But to me, that's not as big of a deal as the antibiotics. But uh, these are sick animals, and they're sick because what they're feeding them, and uh, by feeding them these antibiotics, they're allowing them to get fat, whereas normally they would just get sick and, and be unable to tolerate this feed that they've been given. Contrary to that, there are farmers who, you know, let their calves wean on the mother, then they go on grass, and then they finish them on a very high quality grain-based feed. Barley, sweet potato, stuff that even tastes good to me that I would probably eat, want to eat. Uh, but that's not what these, that's not where these people are buying meat from. That's not. They're buying the Costco and McDonald's meat and acting like it's, it's good. It's from these high quality ranches that are grass finishing their cattle and they're happy and healthy. That's not the case. In regards to the intramuscular marbling and the size of these steaks, normally it would take it, it is possible to get that marbling and steaks that big in a grass-fed cow, but it would take three to four times as long. The cow would literally be eight to nine years old, which is unheard of in the United States. It happens in Spain, it happens in Italy, but not here. So the way we're able to achieve those huge super marbled steaks in two years is because of the growth hormone, the antibiotics. The growth hormone increases the yield by like 20%. The antibiotics allow them to get fat very quickly in a span of two years while being sick. So, but that actual physical intramuscular marbling is a result of selective breed, breeding. And that would not be possible, you know, you couldn't go to the supermarket and buy these steaks and, and eat them. It's literally the top 5% of steaks even now. These steaks would have literally never existed in even just a hundred years ago because of how much we've bred these animals. That's why you don't hear about the indigenous Maasai talking about how much they love uh, their porterhouse seared over a 900 degree fire finished with sea salt because it did not exist. The fat on these animals, they were getting fat from the kidneys, the suet, that's why humans have love handles. You know, they were getting it from various organs, various fatty tissues, marrow, brain, stomach lining, things like that. That's where we were getting our fat from the animals. It did not exist intramuscularly. There were fat deposits through various parts of the animal. So 100 years ago, if you wanted to eat this diet, you would have had to have eaten pretty much kidney fat. And the only edible fat in those animals would have had to be grass fed because grain fed fat is like, it's called gristle. It's pretty much inedible outside of the context of a marbled steak. Another thing to touch on is, you know, when the carnivore kills an animal, they go for the belly. That's where the fat is, the kidneys, that's where the kidney fat is. And that's specifically in these wild animals, that's the only real parts of their body where they store fat, the belly and the kidneys. That's how it's supposed to be in animals. 
And that's why we only used to kill animals in the fall when they were fat at certain points and harvest the fat from those various parts of the animal. The back fat, the kidney fat, the stomach fat. So you could think that, hey, maybe eating bacon, pork belly, is close to this. And arguably it is, but you know what we feed pork now and the polyunsaturated fat ratios and how we make bacon is very unnatural compared to like a wild boar and you, you harvest the bacon yourself and make it yourself. It's very different from buying you know, a grass-fed beef belly versus store-bought bacon. Those are two drastically different things, although bacon and eating belly of an animal for your source of fat is definitely more realistic and closer than eating ribeye steaks and even, even ground beef. The reason ground beef is palatable is because of they ground it up to mince pretty much. And if you actually wanted to eat beef and fat in those ratios in nature, you would have to get grass-fed beef fat and whatever palatable uh, other parts of the animal there are because that ratio of fat to protein does not exist naturally in any muscle group. The lean is separate from the fat in wild animals and how animals are naturally supposed to be. So, you know, through these farming practices and through selective breeding, we've created foods that people love on the carnivore and zero carb diet. And although they say they feel good on them and they try to justify consuming them, it's not correct from a natural standpoint or a moral standpoint. So. Uh, I think this is probably the most compelling argument there is against grain-fed uh, eating and uh, we, we can make a whole other argument for the nutrient density and I'll do that but focusing more on organ meats uh, and it's just like these people on the carnivore diet they're all like oh well I feel good or I've, I've done this for 10 years my dad's been eating a loaf of bread every day for about 40 years and he says he feels great and he's happy so don't 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 say that BS like on my comments, please. And guys, I'm sorry to anyone who I offend with your you know how many years you've been doing this or like a John is Vonda Planet stuff. But if you're gonna sit here and tell me to believe this guy had 500 heart attacks, like you can get out of here, please, because I honestly I was I was very patient and respectful considering how I wanted to act after. Uh, and I'll touch on this briefly. I don't want to get into the Vonda Planet stuff in this video, but. There are a lot of points that he is 100% incorrect on, and there's a lot of things that chronologically do not fit in place in his story. And to me, guys, please, I understand I might have hurt a lot of your feelings that you look up to this guy, that he's helped a lot of people, but what do you want me to tell you? You know, I, I was as nice as I could be about it. That's it. That's my opinion. That's how my understanding of it. Please do not insult me or my intelligence or my past dietary knowledge and experience by telling me things like uh, you're wrong, you need to, he has all these people vouching for him, don't tell me things about eating grain-fed beef, oh this girl ate grain-fed beef for 10 years and she's never eaten a bite of liver and she left because she doesn't eat it. Guys please, I'm gonna lose, I don't need to lose any more brain cells. Please, I don't. I, I, like, 